Nozzle swaps are best if done here at industrial ejection by injector technician. Uh, we've got tools that are specifically designed to, to do nozzle swaps. And uh, if you have to do them at home, I'm going to show you the best way uh, with tools that you probably already have. So the tools you'll need to do a nozzle swap are a pair of standard pliers, a circular brush for cleaning the carbon out of the nozzle cap, quarter inch nut driver with a quarter inch deep socket, a 15 millimeter wrench, brake clean, lightweight motor oil, a torque wrench, and your new nozzles with your holding tool that you'd put in a vise. And then of course your injector. On the 5.9 injector in particular, they got two different styles. We consider the old style and the new style. Uh, they're just a little bit different designed and the plunger length and the parts that actually go, that connect to the nozzle that operate the, the pencil. So the new style is the part that, parts that usually get lost the most. If you treat every injector as if it's a new style injector, because you don't know until you pull the nozzle off as to what you know, style you're gonna have. So if you take precaution and lift the nozzle up sideways, you will, uh, you will avoid any potential of losing parts. In most cases, your injector will be the older plunger style, which will look like that. And let me pull that out for you so you can see the difference. So this is the new style nozzle with the new style plunger. Has this little puck right there that sits in there. And this puck has to sit in there flat. And if it's not flat, it'll mess up the way the injector operates and cause it to stick. The new nozzle also has a cutout, so this collar can slide up in there. This nozzle only works, I should say, with this style body, this is the only style nozzle that will work. It will not work on the old style nozzle. That will not slide in there. There's no cup. So I'm going to mount the tool in the vise. Set the injector in there. Slides right in. Take the pliers. Pull the copper off. So next what I'm going to do is put the 15 millimeter wrench on. I'm going to put the nut driver on the tip and just put downward force on it as I break it loose. This will ensure that the carbon that's stuck between the nozzle and the cap doesn't stick to the nozzle and turn the nozzle as you're breaking it loose and shear the pins off. So before I start pulling the cap off, I always like to have a pan, a magnetic tray. So if I pull the nozzle cap off and I lose any parts, it'll fall in here. Uh, the new style versus the old style, the new style has a lot smaller parts and they always get lost. People don't realize that they stick to the bottom of the nozzle, they pull the nozzle off and uh, they lose that part. And that's a very critical part as to how this injector operates and will not operate without that part. I like to tilt the nozzle sideways until I can get my finger in there and push down any parts or make sure no parts are stuck to the bottom of the nozzle. So now that I got the nozzle off, I want to ensure that there's no contaminants on the, the mating surfaces of the nozzle and the injector. So what I'm going to do is just put my finger over all these small little parts and just put a little pressure and just give it a light spray of brake clean to clean it. it kind of knocks off any of that extra carbon or whatever might have fallen onto that, in, that plate. So then once that's done, I do the same thing, put my finger over all the small parts, and just give it a light blow of air until dry, and make sure it's clean and oil free. It's important to get all the carbon out of there so it's clean. Check on the inside, make sure there's no carbon in there. What I like to do is just take some brake clean
Just take a little compressed air. And then I'm gonna take my new nozzle. There's two places that you need to oil up before installing the nozzle. One I like to do right here on the shoulder. This is a surface that meets with the cap, the nozzle cap, and you want that to slide nicely. You don't want any chatter, so by lubing that ensures that you get a nice, good, even torque. And then I also like to do the threads of the injector, keeping the surfaces dry with no oil. And now when I install the nozzle, I like to kind of go at an angle. By going at an angle, I line up the two pins, how it's going to go. They really only goes one way. And then I kind of come at an angle. It keeps from the pencil from sliding out. And then I just push it back in and just quickly start to drop it on until it sets in there nice. So one thing I forgot to mention is you will need a 15 millimeter deep socket for torquing the nozzle nut back on. So I got my new nozzle in place. I got my cap cleaned up. Now here I've got an angled torque wrench. Uh, at the end of the video we'll show you uh, different torque specs for years and makes of any vehicle that we sell nozzles for. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do an angled torque on this injector. Uh, if you don't have an angled torque wrench, uh, that's all right. We'll give you the specific torque specs on for the year and make of your vehicle. So on this specific injector, it's a 55 newton meter pre-torque. So what I'm looking for when I do this is it to be nice and smooth, no chatter. Chatter is bad. And then I'm gonna break it loose. So now I'm ready for my final torque, which is an angle torque. I'm gonna to do it 6.8 newton meters to start with, and then it's gonna I'm gonna pull it to 40 degrees. No chatter. When you have chatter, you put a side load on the nozzle, and basically that's gonna warp the pintle and the nozzle. So you could have sticky nozzles. Uh, a sticky nozzle, it could leak out of the cap if it's not torqued properly, high returns. Uh, there's just many, many issues, and the worst of all, motor failure. So please follow the torque specs that uh, we give you. Once it's torqued, I like to just put a little bit of STP, assembly lube, anything that's good and sticky. Just press that on there. And now you're ready for install, it won't fall off.